1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to verse 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. I'm Prophet Ezekiel Melchizedek. I come your way with the words of comfort while we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned. Hallelujah. The world's Praise God. The world's What I did on the cross. Go and tell the whole world. In the sight of God. 
Verse 22. Repent therefore of these thy wickedness, and pray God, if there are the church of thy heart, may be forgiven thee. Verse 23. For I perceive that thou art in the God of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Then answered Simon and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. So we see Simon, the weak doctor, who has given his life to Christ. Supposedly, I mean, outwardly, he said he has given his life to Christ. So he joined the disciples of Christ. Then he saw them doing miracles. They were casting out demons. They were laying hands on the sick and they recovered. They prayed for people and died with miracles were taking place. So the guy, he wanted the same experience. He wanted to have that kind of power. So he told them that he's going to buy it from them. That is when Peter saw that he has not given his heart to Jesus. Because if your heart is given to Jesus, you will know that the things of God belong to you from your heart. You don't need to think of buy something from God with your money. Because the rich man thinks that he has advantage over everything so far as he can buy with money. He can get everything for himself. But you see, those who have a heart for God, they believe that so far as God is going to bless them, they will have it. So, Peter rebuked him and the words of Peter shows that the weak doctor had not given his heart to Christ. Verse 20, Acts 8, 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. So, why would he think like that? Why would he think like that? Now look at what Peter said in verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor Lord in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. But the problem was with his heart. Your thinking comes from your heart. The way you think about things is determined by the kind of heart you have. So if Peter uh, could know that Simon the old doctor has an evil heart because of the way he taught. The same way God knows our hearts. Because to Simon, he said, your heart is not right in the sight of God. So that's why you need to give your heart to Jesus so that he can make it right. Mm -hmm. When your heart is not right in the sight of God, your life can never be right. Neither can your children be right. When your heart is evil, you always think about evil things. You think about killing people. You think about stealing from people. You just think about taking what doesn't belong to you because your very heart is not right in the sight of God. You see, everything we do, if God doesn't see it right, then it means it's not right. And God sees from our heart first. That's why you need to give your heart to Jesus. We're talking about giving your heart to Jesus. And we need to understand here that Simon the weak doctor came because he said he believed in Jesus. That he too had given his life to Jesus. You know, now look at verse 13. Acts chapter 8, verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. So Simon, the weak of that, believed. He believed in Jesus. He believed the gospel. But then, he did not give a heart to Jesus. There's a great difference between the two. You believe in Jesus and then give your heart to Jesus. 
There are so many people that believe in Jesus, including demons. In fact, the Bible tells us that demons also believe in Jesus and they tremble. When we mention his name, they believe in his power. They tremble at his presence. So when you say you believe in Jesus, that is not all. But that is by faith. But there is an aspect of your heart that you give to God that determines a change of life. There are so many believers who have not given their heart to Jesus. That is why they are not living right. They pray all right. They confess scriptures. They go to church. There are some who are even pastors who preach the gospel. But they have not given their heart to Jesus. So their lifestyle is sinful. Their heart is full of bitterness. It's full of evil imaginations. So they can pray miracles to happen. Because they believe. You know, the criteria for miracles to happen is believing. When you believe. If anybody who believes can receive a miracle. But your heart is not given to Jesus. Like the prostitute I told you about. Who prayed for a dead customer to come back to life. While they were doing it on the bed, the man died. So this woman believed that Jesus can raise the dead. She cannot come out of the hotel room alone. Being a prophet. Hallelujah. Psalm 120. The Bible says, I was glad. Moving he said, oh, in our midst. My name is Prophet Isaac. How worship you. The minister of the Salvation Christian. I worship you. Also known as the Yeshua Address Minister. You are yeah, here. I so fortunate to invite you to watch Working every in Sunday. Every 9 a.m. till noon. I worship you. And every Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. till worship noon. I worship you. Operation Sam. You um, are so here. And then every last Friday morning is the P.A.G. 9. I worship you. We are located at the Salvation House at the back of the You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Hello, precious one. You're watching the Yeshua Artist Broadcast. God bless you for watching. We are spreading the gospel to the nations. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible says, This gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness against the nations before the end of the world shall come. Yes, now we want to invite you to support the work of God, sponsor the work of God, be a partner in this broadcast. You can send your tithes, your seeds, your offerings, oh yes, your partnership offerings, and the Lord will bless you. Look at the number showing in the screen. You can call the telephone numbers. You can also look at our banking details. And I believe that God is going to bless your life. Now, you know to know that the gospel is a fertile soil where you can sow your seed. So God will give you a harvest of righteousness. When you give, the Bible says, you shall come back to you with mercy and praise now. Shaking together, running over, shall be given unto you. Of course, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And I want you to understand that God has a package of blessings for you as he sponsors this broadcast. God bless you. Hallelujah. But he still believed in prayer in the name of Jesus. So he prayed. And the man came back to life. He prayed in the name of Jesus. So she believes in Jesus. She believes in power that is in Jesus. But the reason why she is still living in prostitution because she has not given her heart to Jesus. So that's why her life is not reformed. That's why she's not born in it. That's why she's living in sin. So if you find out that there are some Christians who are living in sin, one thing is for real, they've not given their heart to Jesus. Like Stephen the Redoubt. He believed in Jesus, but he didn't give his heart. His heart. The heart was not involved. That's what Peter told him. He says, your heart is not right in the sight of God. Verse 22. Repent therefore of this, that wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. Mm -hmm. So, repentance starts from your heart. When you give your life to Jesus, your heart must repent 
of the evil things that you never did, that you once did, the sinful life that you ever perpetrated before you came to discover Jesus. So now, he tells the weak doctor to repent. Repentance starts from the heart. A person who has never repented can never have a good heart because the heart is wicked. Then he says, if perhaps the thought of the heart may be forgiven thee. The thought of his heart was wickedness and iniquity. Look at verse 23. But perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. So our hearts can perceive evil, think evil, imagine evil. Genesis chapter 6. Then your Bibles. The Genesis chapter 6. When the heart is not right, your lifestyle becomes evil. Your lifestyle becomes sinful. When the heart has not repented, it demands wickedness. He says, where the generation of Noah, and so God destroyed them with all the second thoughts because they were very wicked. Genesis chapter 6 from verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was raised in the air, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So imagine what God saw in human beings. God saw wickedness. And their wickedness, God saw that it originated from their hearts. That their hearts imagined evil continually. To the extent that God even was sorry for creating human beings. The sixth. Genesis 6, 6. And repented the Lord that he had made man the earth, and it grieved him and his heart. So you can imagine how God can be grieved in his heart. That he made man, he created man. Because the heart was so wicked. That's why you need to give your heart to Jesus. When you give your heart to Jesus, he will come and change the wicked nature of the heart. Then you give a godly heart. Because the human heart, the human heart is very wicked. Extremely wicked. So do not underestimate the wickedness of the human heart. Because human heart can be very, very wicked. The Bible says in so many times about the heart of man, so that we can be careful about human beings. Because you might not know what their heart could be conceived of thinking about. When a person's heart is wicked, his life becomes wicked. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful about all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He says, The heart is deceitful. Your own heart can deceive you. Sometimes you think you're good, but your heart can deceive you. You do evil before you know that you are not good after all. Oh, yes. We have so many who have killed. They never thought of killing them. But they killed anyway. Because somebody infuriated them. Somebody annoyed them. So out of anger, they strike in the person died. That's because your heart deceived you. You think that you're good. So your heart can deceive yourself and your heart can deceive your neighbor. That's why you give your heart to Jesus. He says the human heart is deceitful about all things. There's no other thing in this human world that is so deceitful than the human heart. Because it has a capacity of deceiving not only somebody but you yourself. It's more painful when your own heart deceives you. That's what Bible tells us in James chapter 5. He says, do not be hearers of the word only, deceiving your own selves. 
Nabi Joe Shatawai, James Shatawai, verse 22. James 22. He said, Do not be hearers of the word on deceiving yourselves, but be doers of the word. When you hear the word and you don't do it, you deceive yourself because your heart is not involved. When your heart is not involved, it's not part of you. Anything that is not part of your heart can never be part of you. That's why a woman can marry a man who doesn't laugh because it's, the man is not in his heart, he's not in his mind. He married him because he thought about the possibilities of marrying the man and the benefits he's going to gain. The rich, the money, marriage of convenience. So his mind, he reasoned it out. So his mind is involved, but his heart is not involved, so he doesn't love the mind. So you see, anything that your heart doesn't go for, that means you are not for it. You can be around it, but you are not for it. So, Simon the Witch Doctor was following in his heart, was, but his heart was not for it. He has not given his heart to Jesus. So a person can say he believe in Jesus, pray in Jesus, but his heart is not given to Jesus. Those are the people that live in sin. They are Christians, all right, but they live in sin because their heart is not involved. So your heart is not part of it. You say, go, but I'm not going with you. Go to church, but I'm not going with you because you have not given the heart to Jesus. Listen to preaching, but the heart is not listening. And once it's not in your heart, it can never be part of your lifestyle. It doesn't matter the number of preachings you hear, the number of quotations you know or you quote or preach yourself. If your heart is not involved, you will never do or obey God's word. Because your heart will not go with you. So, if you want to give your life to Jesus, the first thing you give to Jesus is your heart. When you give your heart to Jesus, it comes to take permanent residence Amen. in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything that you give to Jesus, it comes and takes over. Because you're giving it to Jesus. So don't let your heart deceive you. The two things the Bible says about the heart in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things, that's number one. And desperately wicked, that's number two. The heart is deceitful.